is growing more and more like i see consumers after corona virus changing their habits towards using more natural materials and opting for companies that have sustainable packaging or just changing their own habits by not using plastic waste or by not using plastic handbags when they go to groceries so i think that helps that helps a lot in sustainability if one person can take a small step towards something it helps the whole environment and i think as sahar and roma said that we need to educate about this more to consumers so as we do that i think consumers are going to get more and more aware of their choices and the materials they use and the processes they go through so i think it's going to be growing more in the coming years and yeah well i would say that the general environment is that the consumers are leaning towards wanting um, sustainable practices ethical practices but i don't think it's clearly enough right now because if we did lean enough and made it unprofitable to operate in an environmentally detrimental way then there would be no business so the non sustainable fast fashion or any other company that are chasing these profits will go wherever the consumers allocate their, that profit I think if we as as a mass allocate a preference to environmentally sustainable ethically produced product in a range of categories not just fashion the market will follow uh, so it it has to be sort of hand in hand when more brands need to come forward and uh, to invest in sustainability driven initiatives and more consumers to be educated and I think platforms like Bare Necessities do that really well you know it kind of I think it starts has to start at home when you start to adopt uh, adopt adapting a green lifestyle personally and you really start paying attention to those little things in terms of where what is happening to this toothbrush when i'm using it where does it go why is it ending up in the in the landfill what can i do to stop it so i think just uh, this is idea of it starting from uh it's almost like a journey map right as you wake up in the day what is the first thing that you do from the first thing to the, to the last thing how can i incorporate more responsible behavior you know and actually even understanding the fact that yes plastic may be a, the most marvelous invention of the industrial uh, industrial um time but uh, industrial revolution but at the same time it's a curse for the environment so even but, I, but of course i have to admit that it is changing a lot more now you see a lot more reusable coffee cups than single use cups people are taking their bags to um a supermarket or shopping to to in turn getting more plastic in return um so i think it kind of, like i said it, ha- it has to be both hand in hand where brands have to constantly work at it um come up with newer way of using existing materials uh, making sure their operations are circular um along with creating products with which have that strong value proposition that will help the consumer understand about sustainability a lot more but also to figure out different view- uses of that same product once they're done done with it it's also it's also really fun for me to experiment with new materials and not just use wood or you know all the single use materials that we have today it's so fun to design something with a new material and to come up with something because when you're designing you never know where the projects going to lead like you design a material and you don't know that okay we can make a lamp out of this so i think that's really interesting for me that's really fun i've always been a person that wants to experiment with stuff and just not use the same process and make a form so as roma said that you question yourself about what you're making how is it relevant to today's time why are you making that does people need it or not so in the same thing i think sustainability matters you think about how it is uh, efficient for the environment and how you can make something that is biodegradable or compostable and just being conscious about where does the product ends and similar with plastic i think plastic is a great material but if we just use it in a more circular manner like we keep on recycling plastic and keep it in the loop so i think it is a great material but we have not done that so we have exploited plastic and it ends up in landfills so yeah just being more conscious about sustainability about the environment i think that will help the industry lead towards a more sustainable trend even to the point of um packaging like um initially my packaging i didn't want to uh, 
just because it was all happening in real time i didn't want to resort to plastic so what i started doing is that any packaging that i would receive for my personal packages i would just paint them and uh, you know pack them up and send the jewelry pieces in that and i'm proud to say that now uh uh our entire packaging is completely 100 percent recyclable um our pouches are made out of a uh, pure hem 100 percent hem uh even our bubble wrap that we use it's not really bubble wrap it's um it's again biodegradable uh and it's compostable as well um we use 100 percent recyclable recyclable boxes seed tags so we have tried to include um and try to be as responsible as we can um in this journey of our brand and uh, we're getting there slowly but surely um i think one of the big uh, sort of developments that happened with our brand was uh it's this idea of building a lot of stock when it comes to fashion brands and trends you're always expected to create so many different collections uh and that was one of the main things that one of the main questions i asked myself when i was uh when i already had i started a brand organically like i said so within the first few weeks i had to understand that why am i creating this piece it, it has to be more than just profitability uh and just aesthetic praise it has to go beyond that i mean there are more products in this world than there are humans why should my product be here and why should it be sold uh so that's when i decided that all our pieces will be made to order so once we get an order then we start manufacturing it we have a small beautiful team of artisans uh that we work together with um yeah and in the last of course last year being uh, the most difficult year probably of everyone's life and it's still ongoing uh when everything was shut down in march we actually uh discovered actually bringing digital into our business plan uh which we had never done before earlier the whole team would go into a workshop and the whole, everyone would sit together work on the piece all the sampling was done everything was done by hand but because everyone was work, working remotely at this time uh we actually implemented a system where we were creating 3d models of all our pieces for and so that our entire new collection was ready and then once the lockdown actually opened up we started manufacturing it um it worked out to be um an interesting model for us and it's uh, we plan to keep it uh, for years to come it's because of course it reduces the carbon footprint um design development even in even in terms of resources production uses um um minimized uh, one thing that i would like to concentrate this year and to upgrade from there is uh to understand more about energy consumption and uh, to move to different energy sources uh, renewable sources so that um we are mindful of digital sustainability as well also kind of created very accidentally um i was interested in starting to live a more low waste or zero waste lifestyle after working quite closely with waste pickers around bangalore city and understanding kind of the conditions in which of course they were collecting all of our waste um but also kind of the routes they were taking the lack of you know personal private uh, protective equipment when they were you know segregating through broken glass and tree napkins um all of that and um i was actually working with them for an energy intervention so we were working on Uh, putting solar lanterns or actually solar panels on their tea stall and giving them access to solar lanterns that they could use in the evening so while it's not of course a solution to energy access it's kind of the first step in driving up that energy access ladder and of course there are migratory community i think all of us have seen a lot of blue tarp homes um of lots of kind of um you know migratory uh, communities kind of living on the fringes of our cities and really providing and building um at the building blocks of all of our cities that we now live in um so yeah working very very closely with this community i um started to kind of question everything i was doing in terms of the way i was living the way i was consuming um you know i've called myself an environmentalist forever i've studied it i've protested for different things um and i think i just needed to live in more alignment with my values and i wanted to just be more congruent with everything i've always said i you know care about and um that's kind of why i decided to try the very crazy thing of going completely plastic free um and it's been about 5 and 5 and something years now and um in my zero waste journey i realized that 
um, I'm sure there are others who are looking to consume more mindfully. So how can we make it easy and accessible for others who are also looking to consume more mindfully? So we have an amazing woman on manufacturing team um, that handcrafts all those products. Um, you know, we deeply care about upskilling. So that whether that means learning English or computer skills or um, a different skill set while you're at work. Um, that's something that we really kind of invest in, um, where we, you know we've applied to be B Corp certified, and we did that application, so that's pending, and we should get that by the end of this year, which is um, quite exciting. Which means kind of not just on environmental metrics, um, you're trying to do everything you can to be more sustainable, but also that you are really investing in the well-being of your teammates, um, and kind of whether that means access to you know, health insurance and whatnot, but transparency, how you account things, um, how everything is shared, how everything is done. So I'm really proud that we kind of mirror those values of uh, B Corp as well. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, the idea was to make this, whether that's bamboo toothbrushes or a Miss Park stick, whether that is awareness on sustainable living um, and finding people where they're at. And that's why we do like a bunch of things, not just sell products, because we think, you know, we're in this business of basically changing behaviors around sustainability and more thoughtful consumption. Um, so we also do a bunch of talks and workshops and um, we have online courses around sustainability. And most recently I wrote a book with Penguin um, that hopes to just kind of digitize a bunch of people, vendors, innovations going on in the space that maybe you might not even find on Instagram, but are doing amazing work to recycle the source of issues, for example. Um, so the idea was to kind of create this giant library of everything I wish I knew when I was in, started in 2015. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about bare necessities um, and what we're trying to build around the values of zero waste, ethical consumption. Doing the talks and workshops was super fun. It was a great way to meet like-minded people. And in a way, it was something that I could do for free. It was just my time and energy spent to talk to people and you know, hopefully spread awareness, but also maybe learn more about um, other people and what they're doing in order to kind of um, this is, of course, you know, pre-social media era where it was like booming, pre-clubhouse era, all of that, right? So these intimate conversations at free markets and workshops were a way to connect with people, but also in a way indirectly create a market for your product. Because I think the first step is people being aware that actually we're living through the largest global garbage crisis of our lifetime. And every toothbrush that you and I have ever used is just sitting here swimming somewhere on this planet and will literally outlive all of our great, great, great grandkids, right? So that metric or that, that just that visual of a toothbrush being here for 700 odd years and then being like, here's a compost for bamboo toothbrush. Equally, if you don't want to consume or purchase, you can use coconut oil, oil pulling, like the whole kind of conversations around slow living, what we used to do, all of that would just kind of um, unravel so beautifully through these conversations. So I think in early days, talks and workshops were a huge kind of element. And I think that building that sense of community has been big for a small bootstrap company like us, um, you know, for a long time we bootstrapped. Um, so I think building community was a, was kind of a way to um, get the word out, um, I guess your way of marketing your product. Um, but more intimately, I, I really don't like to say the word marketing, it was more like building a sense of community with everyone. And um, for sure, I think awareness and was the first step towards more thoughtful consumption. And that's kind of how Ben Sestis approaches it. Definitely. I mean, I completely agree with Seher. Um, we have to keep educating ourselves and the consumers. Um, and it's I don't think it, the communication just has to be about sustainable consumption, but it's actually reminding ourselves again that we are nature and that all of us are connected. I think if our relationship with nature creates a strong, stronger bond, in turn, we will respect the environment a lot more, therefore make those right consumption choices. I also think that... Uh, with the, with the way communication has been about sustainability and because it's been also the word is thrown around and used as a blanket term right it kind it really it's like a blanket statement with with sometimes if the right terms or the right sort of um if it's not communicated in the right manner you know and it doesn't have that actionable information it'll still uh, be on the surface it doesn't really resonate with the customer uh so i definitely think that it has to be a combination of educating them in terms of how to be zero waste i mean i myself have actually recommended seher's course how to be zero waste to a bunch of people by the way <laughs> i really like it i'd come across it on their website and uh, so i think it's really important that uh it's about educating people on a very 
personal level and as brands we need to communicate about our products how they created the thought process behind it and not even leave the end it's about actually making sure it's circular so it's about really thinking about what is going to happen to this product at the end of its life cycle so when you're selling something to a client actually reminding them that like this is what you can do once you once you don't want to use it in the same manner anymore you know how can you upcycle it how can you recycle it so i think it has to be um i think communication and ed- i think educating uh, customers is perhaps the most important thing because up until we really do that um i mean in terms of brands that are not sustainable today for them to be for them to even move in the zone they will go where profitability is right and if consumers sort of really start understanding and choosing the right products thereby it will convert these other companies also to look at that and uh, learn from it and um, eventually give the consumers what they want which is something ethical mindful and sustainable mostly waste materials to make objects and make different kind of products and so my whole practice is based on trying to see waste in a different way trying to <laughs> trying to just you know make something out of waste or natural materials and experiment with it so this is how i work and what i do is i for example i made a seaweed lamp and that seaweed lamp was a uh, it started with you know a university project i collected all the dried seaweed which was considered as waste and it was really invaluable to a lot of people but i took it back and then i experimented with it i did some experiments did some observations and i made a sheet material out of it which then later turned out to be a lamp so i realized that you know you have so many of these brass sculptures things like that that are lying around the house and things that you sometimes have gotten gifted years ago that you don't want to use it kind of started from there where i it was honestly it is not easy to recycle brass because no recycling company in this country wants to work with a small brand because the, a lot of recycling agencies expect us to create 100 kilos of waste for me to be able to work with them now that is really tough i don't create more than 20 kg is a lot of waste for us because it and so it i mean that's how we kind of started i literally went to a recycling agency in bombay and sat down and i told them that please take me on as your client and where we where i asked them you know what sort of e waste is coming in because there's a lot of electronic waste that um, is recycled at these centers and then they just kind of filter it out and so i started giving them everything all the waste that i had even things from my house <laughs> or things from even the team you know things that they don't really need to, don't have any use for and they just it's lying away in a, a wardrobe or whatever so we also started taking on a lot of work which is for personal clients so where clients come give us um, their metals whether it could be gold whether it's stones or recently we did a beautiful bag for a client where the client actually gave us his mom's sarees and then we pulled out all the stones from it and then we used those stones for a completely handcrafted uh, brass bag so we in any kind of product that we create we of course make sure that it has to be done with a recyclable metal or we need to avoid procuring as many materials as we can and if we do procure any material it has to be from a local vendor um you know from the community that exists around the workshop so that's the process that we followed so far uh, but i'm really excited to actually now be in a position uh, where i'm going to hopefully get to work with a lot more materials now that i worked on this saree with the stone now i want to use textile So you know it's it's an ongoing process it's 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 an experiment that you kind of do and things that work you take it forward and you see where you can minimize waste um the other thing that i think i really want to concentrate on from here on now is actually collaboration i feel that in in terms of waste management and production if there is no communication between different um, industries like for me as a jewelry brand maybe i i could use the waste that's created by a bridal wear brand 
for example you know with the waste that they are generating i mean there are so many bradley bear brands today that must have these katrans that they don't really do anything with right because they either they're stocked away and i'm actually in touch of exploring this for i've already spoken to about 35 um uh, bridal wear brands but i it's been a struggle to kind of get them to understand and see the value in this because they don't want to admit to the fact that they're creating waste so i think i i do feel that what's lacking right now for all of us to kind of grow together is that to actually be able to collab- collaborate like i should be for example i have nirain i could call nirain and be like hi nirain you know in terms of can we use this material let's collaborate and let's create a new value proposition for the client i think we need to look at it like that instead of it being a singular growth and um that's when one will be able to upcycle and use each other's material really well because in a uh, a particular supply chain my my waste could be an input material for another brand but it's about actually having that clear communication around it between brands between the consumers the refineries casting companies and you know it's it has to be a model that kind of works together from coconut oil to lavender from kashmir to you know um activated charcoal and bamboo so we definitely work with a lot of ingredients um lots of oil based stuff um we definitely have a robust kind of uh, ecosystem of suppliers that we re- and partners that we rely on um a lot um some of my favorites are um, mason and co we get um a cocoa butter from them which is a byproduct of their chocolate rice and what roma say you know one company's waste can be a resource for another so using that cocoa butter in our lip balms and uh, some other products that are making in the pipeline uh, we also use their cocoa powder in our dry shampoo um so of course we try and mirror you know align with different enterprises that have the same kind of ethos and values um so that's been really fun and it's an excuse to travel and you know find and meet all these amazing people um another one that i uh, would like to tell the story of is um our combs our neem combs um this vendor says that basically his family has been making carved wooden things since the mogal empire and this is like an art trait that has carried down through generations and generations so um we also make these spokes which is a spoon and a fork which is a product that he never made like you know his uh, that's something that so we did the prototyping it worked in, in up with him but it's really cool to see that um you know he's so proud of this art form that has kind of gone down to generations and then using a more contemporary spin on it of what maybe one might might need um you know in their little zero waste bag or you know in their backpack or whatever to just replace that single use plastic spoon or fork with that so um this is a product that he never thought in his wildest imagination he would make even uh so those are kind of some fun little uh, collaborations on sourcing that i uh, wanted to share but for sure definitely echo um roma sentiments uh, i think i'm really excited by actually materials uh, like seaweed hemp mycelium so i i would love to share with you more on that i think in terms of packaging in terms of um there's just so much that can happen here and uh, you know seaweed being used for um, water tablets in um in the london marathon for example uh, which is great to kind of replace all that single use plastic water bottles um to hemp packaging which is um super cool and a great alternative to styrofoam so i think there is so much to do and so many materials to explore and i think as the space is growing we'll just see more people kind of going back to exploring more natural materials um that that is you know comes from nature but also goes back to nature without putting all of this pressure um on our ecosystem so i'm really excited to see kind of what the next few years has in store for us